I just said y equals 2x plus 6, is that a function? Well, we're going to actually teach you how to decide if something's a function or not. But we're not, we haven't taught you that yet. So really, the only thing that you've been taught would be if you graphed it, it would have to pass the vertical line test. Do you guys remember hearing about the vertical line test? Okay, at least it's in your memory banks a little bit. I'm going to take two seconds and say, would you agree it has a y-intercept of 6 and it has a slope of 2, so it's like rises more than it runs. And so does that seem somewhat reasonable for the graph? Yeah. Okay, so if I put a vertical line like this, would it ever hit it twice? No. No. That's called the vertical line test, and it passes that, so it is a function. But there's three ways to tell if something's a function, and that's one of the three ways that you already know from algebra is if you graph it, it should pass a vertical line test. All right, so what is this function notation? Well, it's just a different way to write the y. And, and I know you've seen it before, but this is why we use it. Have you ever heard of f of x instead of y? Does that ring a bell? All right. So do you get, I didn't change my function. I just changed how I wrote it. The function is still going to double whatever the x is and add 6 to it. It's just a different way to write it, and it's got some advantages. Because if I had two functions here, I had this one that I wrote in black, and let's say that I have one that I write in red, then I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. They both say y equals. In fact, they both have the same name. They both say y equals. So it's like they don't have a different name. Well, when you use function notation, you could call this one g of x. And that's a way to tell them apart. Now I can just refer to the f function and the g function, and that's a way to kind of Tell them apart. Do you get that that gives me a, a way to name them? Otherwise, they're all Y. Okay, good. That's one of the reasons we do it. The other reason we do it is if I decide to put a number in, like let's say I decide to stick in X equals 2. If I decided to stick in 2, do you get I put a 2 here and I'm saying F of 2? And I put a 2 here and I actually get the answer. So how is this any better? Well, at the end, if I had just stuck two in the normal equation, you know, if I had stuck two in right here, do you get the answer would have been four plus six, so it's 10. Do you get how it's 10? But if I do it this way, the cool part is by using function notation, even though I have the same answer of 10, I can tell what I stuck in to the problem. If I just have y equals 10 from solving this thing, it doesn't tell me that I stuck in a 2 and I got 10, whereas this tells me what I stuck in and what I got. Do you get why people use f of x? It allows you to have different names, f of x, g of x, and it tells you what you stuck in. I stuck in a 2 and I got a 10. All right. Next thing I want you to understand is if I do have this, you have to understand that that makes a point, 2 comma 10. Do you get that the 2 is in the x spot and the 10 is the y spot? Okay, so if I said f of 3 equals 11, that's referring to a point. I stuck in x was 3, and I got 11 for the y equals. It's 3 comma 11. Does that make sense to you so far? Okay. You know this is where the x was, right? f of x. So that's x is 3. All right. Now let's make a new function. We're going to call it uh, p of x, just so you don't think it's always f of x. P of x is equal to 6x minus 1. And g of x is equal to 9x. 
let's see if you can handle what is P of 7 and what is G of 7. Well, this is just saying stick 7 into the P function and then stick 7 into the G function and see what you get. What would you get when you stuck 7 in the P function? Well, here it is. I put a 7 right there. That's 6 times 7 is 42. 42 minus 1 is 41. Did you get 41? Awesome. So I just say equals 41. And this tells me a lot. It tells me I used the P function. It tells me I stuck a 7 in, and it tells me that the answer was a 41. How about G of 7? Hmm? Well, I stick the 7. Can I put it here? Sure. It's just saying G of 7 then. And 9 times 7? 63. So by writing it this way, I'm telling you a lot. I'm telling you I used the G function, I stuck in a 7, and I got an answer of 63. You with me? So this is pretty easy, isn't it? Okay. Now, one thing that freaks people out, I've all I've done so far is I've I've just put in numbers. What if instead of sticking in a number, I stuck in a letter? What's P of M? Overthink this. Not like a super, super mystery. We just stuck M in the function. What do we get? And the answer isn't like 12. The answer has variables in it. Torsten. 6M minus 1. 6m minus 1, that's all there is to it. We stuck m into this function right here. m goes right there. 6m minus 1. Make sense? All right. Of course, it's going to get a little more complicated. What if I stuck in m plus 2? Getting the idea, I think. You're just going to stick in m plus 2 into the function. But it's in a parenthesis. If you didn't do that, you're probably going to get the answer wrong. I think that when they teach variables, they should teach them as an empty parenthesis. Because there are parentheses, and it does matter. So now I've got six parentheses, m plus 2, minus 1. Now, I get that you might not know this, but you were supposed to simplify this as much as you can. So you were supposed to distribute this out and combine like terms. If you haven't already, you should do that. Because that would not be accepted on the test. It's like you, it's like you got partway done with the problem, but you didn't finish. 6m plus, well, 6 times 2 is 12, but then let's take away the 1, and that gives us 11. Who had 6m plus 11? Okay, awesome. So, are you with me so far? Then, I just have to ramp it up a little bit further. Instead of, we're going to keep using these same functions just because I don't want to make you copy new ones every time. This one usually throws a few people for a loop, but if I just tell you, don't overthink this, maybe, maybe you can believe me, it's not super complicated. 2p of 9. Really, 
it comes down to, do you think you should do two times the P? Or do you think you should do P of nine? You should have done P of 9. And then, later, deal with the 2. So let's do P of 9. 9 times 6 is 54, minus 1 is 53. Who had 53 as part of their answer? Good. Then 53 is here. P of 9 is 53. Now what do you think we do with the 2? Is the answer 253? No. It's 2 times the 53. This is in parentheses, so it's two times that. So final answer, 106. Who had 106 for us at it? Okay, good. It's gonna get even a little more complicated, but just keep doing the function and just do one step at a time. What if I said 5g of seven divided by two p of two. One step at a time. Don't get intimidated. Just go, eh, I'll just do this part. Then I'll do this part. Then I'll multiply some stuff. Then I'll simplify it as much as I can. And if you're getting this so far, this is algebra two. person I usually pair you with. In rows one and two, it's the person straight across from you. And these two, it's straight across from you. Back here, it's you two, and then you three, three need to prepare answers. Okay, go ahead and do that. See if you got the same thing as them. All right. So G of seven. Oh boy. I I am wondering what that is. Is that a nine X? Is yeah. okay. That's supposed to be a nine. Now I totally understand. Some of you just did it with a four because it was a nine and I had erased part of it. So it's okay if you did if you used a four there, you're obviously going to get a different answer. All right, so I'm going to stick seven into the g function. Nine times seven is sixty-three, and then I have five times sixty-three, whatever that is, over, and then I'm going to do the p of two. The two goes in here. Six times two is twelve. Minus one is eleven. So this is 2 times 11. All right. Do you guys essentially get that and then just multiply it up? It's the same thing as me? Cool. All right. So do we have to actually multiply that up? Well, the 2 times 11 is really easy. That's 22. And 5 times 63? Yeah, on a test, you'd have to be able to go off to the side and go 63 times 5. 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 6 is 30. Add the 1 is 31. 315. You guys get the same thing as me? Okay. All right. There's one last concept. And once you understand what it's asking, it's super easy. But at the beginning, it will be confusing. But once I'm telling you, you're going to go from I don't get this at all to, oh, that's all you do? So be prepared. It's going to look weird.
find x when g of x equals 72. Now, at first, it really seems complicated. And, and if you really didn't understand it, you might just think I said to stick 72 into the g function. Then that is not what it says. You're not supposed to stick 72 into the g function. But g of x has now been defined as being 72. Do you see a g of x on the page? I do. Look close. There's a g of x on the page. It's right there. And what did they just say g of x is equal to? 72 equals 9x. See what I did there? g of x is 72. There's g of x. I replace it with 72. And now it's just 9 times what makes 72. And the answer must be what? 8. We found x. x would have to be equal 8. So did I stick 72 in the function? No but I stuck 72 somewhere. All right, let's do one like that. Find x when p of x is 17. Don't put 17 into x. Find P of X. I found P of X. It's right here. And replace it with 17. 17 equals 6X minus 1. Then I add 1 to both sides. 18. X must be 3. Raise your hand if you had X equals 3. Cool. You now know everything. This is a little easier than normal day. And we usually do that on purpose because we also know we got to hand back the tests. You know what I mean? So today's worksheet's pretty easy. So let's go ahead and open that up, find that worksheet, and for the rest of the hour, you'll probably finish this puppy in class, but there will be a stark divide between some kids are going to get the test back and it's going to be like a 95 and they're going to be like, yay, I just got to work on my homework all hour, and other kids are going to have like a 60 and they're going to be like, oh crap, I got to like, figure out what I did wrong here. Please be the nice kid who's willing to share your, like, how do you do number four? Be the kid who takes a second and says, oh, yeah, you gotta do is this. Here's, here's how I did it, okay? Because the people are gonna be confused about why they got stuff wrong. And you gotta take a second and show them, all right? Now, would you agree that if I hand back Torsten as test, and I mean, he's got an A, and I hand back uh, the kid right next to him, and they've got a C, that seems like a big difference in the grade. But it's only two more problems wrong. The difference between an A and a C can be just two problems wrong. So if you get your test back and it's a C, and you're like, oh, crap, I'm bombing this class. Compared to the kid next to you, literally, the difference, two problems wrong compared to that. Okay? So don't freak out too much if you've got a C on this test. I will say, D, you're, it's worthy of freaking out a little bit if you got a D on this test, okay? Because that means, you know, like a D on your first test is not a great way to start. But a C, literally, you're two points away from an A, two problems away from an A. And if you have a D, you do have a lot of things wrong, and we should not necessarily talk about you leaving this class at all. I really think if you have a bad grade on this, you just need to buckle down and get your algebra straight. All right. So... Anybody who gets a C or a D on the test, I will be handing you your makeup. Because I know you're going to want to like not just like ignore the fact you got a C. So I'm going to give you a makeup assignment. The alternative was what my colleagues are doing uh, is that you're, you're gonna have to do a more complicated retake process. For, for my class, I am making it simple. 
you know how much I think that Algebra 1 is contained in these first 20s. They're like, if you master the first 20, then you're going to be great at Algebra 1. So, moral of the story is, and when you get your test back, don't freak out if you got a low score, but do the makeup, which is one first 20 that everybody else didn't have to do. You should do an extra one. And I even put the key on the back. Can't be that bad. Okay? So if you do that, I'll give you some points back on your test. All right. So work on that worksheet. Let's just get started together. What is number one? Torso would you reading number one? Uh, well, f, uh, of. f of x is 7. Does it say f of x equals 7? Well, it's f of, f of 7. Oh, f of 7. That's a big difference. Okay. Yeah, f of 7. And then you better tell me what the f function is. The function is f of x equals 3x minus 4. Okay, good. So you're saying stick 7 into that function, right? Mm -hmm. So this is 3 times 7 minus 4. So f of 7 is 21 minus 4, which would be 17, I think. Raise your hand if you had 17. All right, good. Any questions about that, how to do those? All right. So I know they get more complicated, but you have a kid right next to you, you can ask, like, how do you do number six? And uh, I'm going to get your test back to you at this time.